Hello everybody, my name is Julian or Flow Graphics and welcome to another video. This is a pretty exciting video. It's actually me making a logo for my game from start to finish with, you know, you're seeing it completely from the initial conception. Uh, it, it's a more of a text-based logo. I do have two really distinct workflows for creating logos. Uh, I very much start on pen and paper or a drawing pad when I'm making sort of more illustrator-based um, I guess like emblems and, and, and sort of icons and a bit more sort of arty logos. Uh, sort of text type logos that are predominantly text. Uh, I, I usually have a totally different workflow, which, which is seen right now. So, and that really just starts with me just playing around with some fonts and just mucking around and painting in Photoshop. And it also involves, involves me going on Steam. Um, so why I'm on Steam right now is because I'm actually looking at similar logos. Uh, it's always good to do a bit of research. So I had to look at various adventure games. Uh, I've got a second screen, which you can't see me looking as well, but I was actually looking at all sorts of adventure games and survival games and things, just trying to get an idea of what other people do. Because I want to do something a little bit different and I want to make sure that my logo sticks out and is unique. Uh, but it's also good to get ideas as well from those other people. So I'm also really looking at fonts here trying to see if there's any fonts because I have the uh, Adobe, Adobe Creative Cloud I have access to Typekit which has tons of awesome fonts uh, that I'm allowed to use so I basically just went through there and just started to try and get some ideas play around with some fonts and sort of draw my um, I'm just using my mouse to draw so everything you can see in this video I'm just painting stuff with my mouse none of it's a drawing pad or anything so you'll be surprised what you can just do with a mouse for concepting work to be honest but I've got these words at the top of my screen, uh, like you can see in the Photoshop document that's not up now, there, here it is. So what it says um, is clear, approachable, bold, strong. Um, it needs to be it's stylistic, it needs to be easy to read, but not too stylized, but it also needs to be like happy and joyful. So a lot of the time when I'm making logos, I like to sort of try and find a few words or a phrase or two that describes the sort of the emotion that I'm trying to convey. And it sounds a bit sort of cliche, but I like to have that up on the screen the whole time I make the logo. So I'm constantly reiterating that in my mind and constantly telling myself, is what I'm looking at, does that, does that sort of apply? Uh, does it work to this description? So you can see I'm really clearly going with this whole sort of vine, sort of nature aesthetic here. And, and it's a funny story what sort of led me to these vines is what I'm going to throw up on the screen right now is a photo I took when I was at a cafe the other day and I saw this. Uh, I saw this sign and I went, that just looks cool. It's just like a random little sign where someone just drew some vines around some letters. But for some, whatever reason, it just really appealed to me. And I just thought, that looks cool. I'm going to take a photo of it. And that was literally my only inspiration for making this logo. I just knew that the white text and the bright, like really sort of saturated, high intensity sort of green, that's almost a yellow for, for the vines. Uh, and then that sort of deeper, more um, bluey green for the leaves or vice versa. It just looks really good. I just really, really liked that aesthetic and I thought, wow, that really matches what I'm trying to create. I want to give a sense of adventure. I want to give a sense of sort of intrigue and mystery, but I want it to be, I don't want it to be like daunting or harsh or like gritty. I want it to be fun and playful. So I guess the white text instantly sort of lifts the mood of the logo a bit. And then the vines I'm using, they're not too much. I think a lot of these examples I made were like a bit too overboard of all of the flowers and like tons and tons of vines. You can see I've sort of dialed it back and dialed it back as I keep sort of imp um, iterating and, and changing the logo. But the colors of the vines are really sort of joyful, happy like colors. And that's what my game is. Lens Island, it's an adventure game. You're on an island, you're building a home for yourself. You're harvesting all the stuff from the island. There is a lot of dark sort of intense parts of the game. It, it, there's a lot of sort of roguelike dungeon crawler elements, but at its root, it's like a fantasy RPG sort of survival game. And, and, and it's a really like joyful, nice, pleasant experience. And I think that's something I really wanted to convey in the logo. Uh, you can also see I've created this little sort of pine tree emblem icon thing. Uh, I wanted to create some sort of icon for the logo. I think this, is, this has always been my, my most favorable format to making any sort of logo. And... I think it's the most effective format for making any logo almost all of the time is have a logo that has an icon and text and they can work together or they can work on their own. And if you start to have a look at all the logos that surround you every day, you'll find that it's the popular option for a lot of companies because it works really well. The Lens Island is 
uh, sort of stylized enough and unique enough and sort of striking enough where it can sort of be an, a logo on its own. Getting rid of that icon, it looks interesting. It, it, it's conveying something. Even if you remove all of the vines and you just have Lens Island, that font itself um, conveys enough style and enough motion that I think it actually does a pretty good job as a logo. Uh, and then we have these vines and these other sort of, uh, sort of I guess, characteristics that really give it some more style and some more sort of interest. And then we have the icon too. So the logo can be used as a whole. You can just use the text. You can just use the icon, whatever you may need. Maybe you can make the icon really big and have it above the word. You can have it below. You can have it to the left, to the right. There's just a lot of flexibility when you make a logo with those sorts of elements in mind. And what you can see me doing now is I've got the logo, I drew all my stuff in Photoshop, I dragged it into Illustrator, and then now I'm actually, I'm vectorizing it. I'm creating the final logo. And the final logo shouldn't ever just be one logo. It should be multiple formats. So I've created a monochrome, so a black and a white version. They don't always have to be black and white, by the way. Uh, they just need to work on black or white. So whenever you make a logo, uh, open up a sort of a, a black square in Illustrator and then a white square and make sure that your logo can either work on both of those if they can. If you have like a bright red logo or a blue logo or something, awesome, that's really good for you. Um, and if it doesn't unwork both of those, you need to create um, some sort of version of your logo that works on a dark background and then one on a white background. This is something that it just inevit inevitably uh, you're going to get some sort of situation where you need to use your logo on a different sort of medium that you thought. But... Yeah, and then what we also did, uh, well, what I did, as you can see, is I'm making this fully detailed sort of version of the logo here. So I've got my two monochrome logos. I've got one flat logo. So the one in the middle, it's got all the vines and the details, um, but it's just flat. Like it doesn't have any uh, shading. It doesn't have any gradients or anything like that. Then there's a step down from that, which is the flat one. Or I guess a step up from that, which is a flat one that has the 3D text. And then now I'm making the full hero shot, best, you know, bees knees, <laughs> the, the fully detailed logo. So the vines, I've added some gradient, I've added some actual shadows that the vines are casting on the text. The text, um, I'm sort of making that sort of 3D element to the text even more interesting, added a bit of a gradient to the letters. And once we throw those elements together, we have our final logo. And this is it right here. Uh, I think I'm really happy with it. Well, I, I don't think I am. I'm really happy with this logo. I think it really conveys the, the the emotion and the thoughts that I'm really trying to provoke uh, when, when you look at the logo. And it's really important. If you don't look at a logo that you've made for something and go, yeah, that fits, that's perfect, you may need to start rethinking things because it's amazing what you can sort of convey with such little um, text or such little color or such little detail. Uh, you can actually get a lot of things across with, with, with not too much. And this logo is definitely on the detailed side. I typically don't make logos this detailed. Uh, but I just, I felt like this one needed it. So here you go. Here's the final logo for my game. Um, this is definitely somewhat of a quick logo design for me. Typically, they can take a long time. This took around four and a half hours to make. They can take a lot longer sometimes, but I didn't really have any problems. I just sort of made everything and got it right the first go. You could see me playing around with a bunch of ideas at the start, but I sort of pretty quickly gained sort of the momentum and really got honed in on the idea that I liked. But I hope you guys sort of got a bit of help from that. If you like more videos like this sort of style of video, please let me know. I'd happily make tons more videos like this. Uh, I've got a couple, uh, an Illustrator video coming out soon as well as some more game dev videos coming out. So stay tuned everybody. I uh, hope you have an amazing day and for all you guys going on holidays or at school, have an amazing holidays. I hope you, you know, spend that time wisely and do lots of art and cool stuff in your, in your spare time. So see you later, everybody. See you in the next video.